Good evening, all. Thank you for joining today's well-being session, Stay Connected While Distanced, an eMERGE program organized by Thai Singapore. Let me introduce our speaker today, Subha Vaidyanathan. Subha left his executive leadership role after three decades to focus on preparing leaders and organizations for a fast-changing world through practicing and championing mindfulness. He has two decades of experience in running marathons, meditation, yoga, and has researched the ancient texts and contemporary science of the mind. Over to you, Subha. Thank you, Subha. And thank you, Siddhi, for organizing these sessions. It is uh, very powerful to be with people who are changing the world with all of you, right? And um, today is a very important topic. This is, uh, I wanted to start off by before I you know, show any slides and things like that, about the sentiment that I have been hearing from people, very senior people in businesses and in the community, especially over the last few weeks, most recent, you know, last two, three weeks. And I'm sure this is in some way reflected in your teams and in your clients and in your ecosystem, if you will. People are exhausted. They thought that we have a new year, we wish everyone happy new year and things will change. Unfortunately, things haven't changed. Second, people want an exit plan. They want at least to know under what circumstances we will exit. And no one seems to be giving that to them. Once upon a time, people said, once everyone has vaccines, it will be fine. Then the vaccines arrive, people got excited. Now some people are saying I won't take, some people are saying even if it's vaccines, I will not exit. So there's a lot of confusion again out there, okay? And we are not here to solve that issue. I'm just here to say what's going on through people's heads. People are anxious, people are frustrated, people are angry, people are depressed. People have exhausted the saying, when will I meet my family and friends? When can I meet my colleagues at work? When can I meet my clients? Even for those who meet, life is not yet normal. So in these times, it was very, very different. A year ago, you could call them for a Zoom party, turn on some music, get some drinks, some snacks, and you would end feeling elated and happy that you had connected with people. You could have coffee and tea with people and you would go back feeling good about it. It doesn't work anymore. People are exhausted with these Zoom parties. These kind of, uh, what shall I say, Team gatherings on Zoom or kind of you know, energy builders on Zoom are not working anymore, whether it's on Zoom or Teams or WebEx or whatever you know, tool that you use. So what is true connection in these times? We have been on this for a year. And if we have to you know, deal with what's coming ahead, how do we stay truly connected with our people. And why does that matter? That's what we'll discuss over the next 20 minutes. Let me get my slide up. This is what I wanted to talk to all of you today about. I want to first start with those of you who follow cricket and would have watched the match yesterday what an exciting finish to the last hour of the last test of the whole series, right? And the whole point of what I wanted to say here was, this is, as people would say, the third rung team, because so many people could not make it due to being injured. They were in a COVID bubble. They could not connect with many people they wanted to connect with. Normally, their fans and all of them in the community there. 
they could not connect with them and under these circumstances playing a top class team in a foreign country coming out on tops how they should have been able to connect with each other under the adverse circumstances that's what i wanted to share with you the second i want to take an example which maybe is faded from your memory when 12 boys decided after their soccer game to celebrate the birthday along with the coach who took them to celebrate the birthday of one of their friends in the cave in thailand and then were stuck there and got trapped there due to the rains and the floods and i kid you not 10000 people had to come together to rescue them a whole country and many countries and even the media came together to get them all out safe what i wanted to say is these are two examples of where adversity is the mother of connection this is the moment adversity is the time when what brings us all together even teams which are dysfunctional come together in times of adversity you may have forgotten this logo but i'm sure you haven't forgotten this one silicon valley is about that romance that romance of i want to bring about a change in the world i want to bring about a new world i want to change the lives of people on this planet i want to define the future of humanity and yet i am small i am tiny and there are big people out there i am the david adversity that's the romance not just of silicon valley but of a startup that is the story each of you lives in and i don't want you to forget that i want you to reconnect with that story because that is what will not only bring your team together but will bring energy to you what is true for you is what is true for your whole team and that's why i say you have to bring home to yourself this connection first you have to start this connection with yourself even though you're distanced from the world in many ways so it is you the founder the top team who makes that difference that is essential before you can bring this to the whole team so therefore now you may ask what is what are the ingredients of making this connection happen i have a simple three step framework for connection beginning with you trust strength and belief i'm not talking here about any of the other mushy stuff that we opened with because the time for that is already gone right you got to get to the real deal the authentic stuff the tough things but the essential things which will lift you you first before you can touch your team you have to learn to trust yourself sometimes it's very hard i know certain days are very hard but you have to learn to trust yourself and i'm going to talk to you about tools around that as we go through today you have to find the strength to overcome adversity in yourself your inner strength your mental strength your emotional strength and your physical strength 
you have to find tricks to get there. I call it very simple energy. Physical energy, mental energy, emotional energy. And most important of all, you need to have belief in yourself, in your story and in yourself. Belief goes beyond trust. Belief is about believing in that vision and believing in that person who's you. These three you have to have with respect to yourself first. Let me give you an example. I am a person who's speaking to you. I run a business after having left a corporate job of 25 years. My retreat center in Bali is shut down. I have no business there. Nobody's coming. There are no inbound flights into Bali. If I don't have the belief in myself, if I don't have the belief in what I am doing on my mission, if I don't find my inner strength, my physical, mental, and emotional strength, how can I speak with anyone? And the mission that I am on is about empowering and, and inspiring people to live their best life, to be a best leader, to lead with their best self. How can I do that? if I don't have these three components in me? How can I lead my team in Bali and here if I don't have these three components in me? How can I lead my community if I don't have these three components in me? It is essential for me to trust myself, to believe in my journey, and to find my inner strength. So as a leader, you need to find these three essential ingredients within yourself. At the same time, you need to build trust in each other, in your team. That is the connection. The connection is trust. Have you ever worked for someone who hasn't trusted you? And how does it make you feel when you're working for someone who doesn't trust you? And the person who doesn't trust you has his or her own reasons why they don't trust you. They may say you don't have the right experience, you made mistakes in the past, this situation is too tough, you haven't you know, been there before, so I have to be there for you. But how does it feel to you if someone doesn't trust you? Will you be at your creative best if someone doesn't trust you? Will you take risks if someone doesn't trust you? Will you make choices and decisions if someone doesn't trust you? How do you expect your team to do all of that? And how do you expect to be in every situation all the time if you don't trust your people and if they don't trust you? Trust begins with listening to each other. In these times, listening is essential, but the quality of listening is even more important. The quality of listening comes where you have a window where people can speak to you without fear of being judged. I know so many organizations where their employees are afraid to speak to their boss or to even their peers because they're either scared they will lose their job or they will be seen as people who are weak. If that is the environment you build, there is a lack of trust. Just all you need to do is to just sit there and listen. Your body, you don't have to give solutions. You just have to listen. Your body and mind and your, you know, just look them in the eye. That's the way to listen to them. Next. Everyone has to feel comfortable to be vulnerable, including you. I just told you a story about my life just now, of what I'm going through right now. I don't have the answers, and I'm being vulnerable with you. By me opening up to you, you understand that I am authentic. I'm not trying to come here and say I'm a great guy. 
I'm not. I am going through the same issues that you are, going through the same uncertainties you are, are, you're going through, and I'm willing to share that with you. I don't have the answers. Like you don't have many answers. And if your team knows that you're also willing to share those situations with them, they will trust you more. They will trust each other more. Always trust is built when you walk up to someone and say, I don't have the answers. I don't know. What do you think? What advice do you have? What suggestions do you have? Vulnerability is a strength. It's a way to build trust. And this is the most important point on this slide, which I wanted to say, share, that focus on this aspect of building this openness within your team and with your team. Trusting people, you may not say, this is too complex, they can't create. But maybe there are some who you can trust with creation. That's when they will be at their creative best. But even if they, you can't trust them with the creation because it's so complex and the stakes are so high, trust them with the execution. Give them some space to be creative and to know that they are trusted, that they can do this in their own way. That is how you will build trust. I'll give you a very simple example, again, from my current world. Six months, the first six months after COVID stream, I told my people at Bali, at the beginning of that time, you know what the situation is. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You guys decide how much you want me to pay you. You write your own paycheck. I tell you, they wrote a paycheck which is less than what I have written for them. And yet, they were so trusting that all of them are so engaged in keeping up the property, making sure is that can receive guests today. Trust is built by trusting your people being vulnerable with them. I was vulnerable. I told them I don't have the answers. You choose how much you want to get paid. I empower you to decide. And I've always been listening to them over these few months, perhaps you can say the last one year. You can do it. I'm sure many of you are doing it in parts. Do it more consistently because in these times, this is the only stability that you can give your teams and your people, trusting each other, a safe space, a place where they know that everyone around them they can trust. That's the best thing you can give to people. And they will be at their creative best, at their engaged best, at their productive best. And your clients will see that in the moment. Your clients will see that this is what your team is. And this is how you will be at your best as an organization. Strength. Trust has to be followed with strength. Strength, as I said, not only physical strength, but also mental and emotional strength. Noel Harari, in his book, Sapiens talks about how stories are what connect us. Now think about the two examples I gave you, but most importantly, third example of Apple. It's the story of Apple that connects their clients, their staff, the founder, all the developers in that ecosystem. Everyone together is connected by the story of Apple. What is the story that connects everyone in your team and everyone in your ecosystem? How often, how often have you told that story to them? How often have you repeated that story to them? How often have you relate to them how we are living that story? The story is very important. Make sure that that gives you the strength by reconnecting with it within 
like I said, right at the beginning, the belief, and also that everyone connects with that story, their version of the story. Peers. Some of you must have heard me say this before. Don't demonize fears, humanize fears. Fears are there to protect you. Fears come up as a warning. Fears are things we welcome into our life to protect us. So don't be fearful of fear. If there is fear, be ready to openly discuss it in the team. How many times have you been with your boss, want to say something, but never get the opportunity to say it because you're fearful? But if the boss were open enough to let you discuss the fears, how different would it be, the relationship? You can make it happen. As founders, you can make that happen. You start with yours and they will share theirs. That's how you build strength in the team. Again, think back of the examples of what happened. If the 12 boys were stuck in the cave and the people outside, when they're discussing their fears, and as you discuss fears, you will be able to construct courage. That is why you discuss the fears. You don't shove them under the carpet. Classic case, right now, as things are going on, so many people have come up with the issue of cash flow. Whether you need to raise funding or whether you need to deal with a payroll, whatever you need to do, you need to construct courage for which you should be able to discuss the fear of cash. And once you discuss the fear of cash openly, you will be able to construct the courage and come up with what needs to get done. So do not be fearful of fear. Let that be openly discussed because that is how, that is a centerpiece of building strength in an organization. My boss always used to say, bad news should travel faster than good news. That is fear, traveling faster than good news, happy news, so that you can construct courage. Third is belief. The magic is created by you, created by us. People are connected by stories. But we are, as a species, people who want to keep improving all the time. And when you want to keep improving all the time, you always look at what needs to get better. But by acknowledging success in times of distress, uncertainty, that is how you will be able to build belief in your story, in your actions, in yourself, in your team and your team members. That's why acknowledging success is very important, however small that success may be. We have a fear. If we acknowledge the success, we will slow down, we will let our guard down. No, discuss the fear, but acknowledge the success at the same time. Acknowledging success helps us to focus our energies on what's working. We will become aware of what's not working by acknowledging our fears but focus our energies on what's working. It gives us tremendous confidence in each other. That's how we build belief in each other, in the team, in the organization, and in the story that we're living in, our version of the story. These three is how we strengthen our belief. Trust strength, and belief. In my mind, begin with you and end with us. Because if you trust in yourself, 
others will trust you. If you trust them, they will trust you and they will trust each other. An environment where you build trust, everyone will work well together. If you make them insecure, it's going to be, we normally think in an insecure atmosphere, people will work harder. In the short run, absolutely true. But this is not a short run problem. We are already one year into it. We may be one more year into this. You need trust. You need belief in your story. In the story of us together, of which I am a part of. My story is a part of that big story. Of which the brand and the company is the bigger part of the story. So that, the team, and my story. We need to have belief in this. We need to demonstrate that we're making progress on the story. And then comes strength. And strength, remember, comes from vulnerability. Remember to be openly discussing your fears and be vulnerable with your people so that they can be vulnerable with you and discuss their fears with you and with each other. So begin with you and end with us. Trust, belief, and strength. That is true connection in times of being distanced. And that is how belief leads to alignment and engagement. Trust leads to creativity and connection. And strength gives us the confidence and the energy to soldier on. Thank you very much. Happy to take any questions. I see some posted here. Anything here? Sudha, is there anything? Uh, I don't see any questions, folks. Do you have any questions? Do you have any, Sudha or Siddhi? I mean, uh, we discussed about uh, the three things, uh, Subha, that are, you know, very essential for organization that are, for example, creativity, alignment, and engagement. How do we achieve those? So, as I said at the beginning, um, trust is the source of creativity. And unless you build trust, with yourself, you cannot be creative. And unless you build trust in the organization and in the team, people cannot be creative. And that's why for me, trust is essential to build in order for people to be creative. The story and the belief is essential for people to be aligned because alignment comes from within and if you repeatedly state the story and acknowledge the success, that is how we will align our resources. And that is what is true alignment. So that's how we'll get creativity and you will get alignment. You mentioned a third thing, what was that? Was that a third? Engagement. Engagement comes from trust. Uh, and belief. Those are the two things. The, the story is what engages you, as I spoke about right at the beginning, right? Um, but I think in all of this, what is essential is the story that I started with at the beginning. What binds us is the adversity. And we have to see it as a common adversity that we are all part of, we are all in. And that's how, that's the story of any startup. And that's the reason why you get aligned. And that's the reason why you get connected with each other. That's how you get engaged. 
Thank you, Subha. That was interesting. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Please provide your feedback on the poll launched before exit the session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.